In fighting games, some characters have an alternate stance which can change their moveset and abilities in the middle of a match. These characters are complex because it can be like learning two characters in one. But Lei Wulong has 13 stances. He has more stances than games have characters, and someone even made a tier list of them. But it's not as simple as just learning more moves. He also transitions in and out of different stances depending on what attacks he uses and even the direction he moves. People have mapped out extensive flowcharts to help players wrap their heads around what's essentially a Jackie Chan simulator. And this is just one character in a game with over 50, each one having pages and pages of moves. How can anyone remember all this? Why can't these games just have like six characters with a few moves each? Like chess. It's an entire world of just 64 squares. In chess, you can quickly learn the rules, there are no DLC pieces that throw air fireballs, and there's only one situation where the hitbox gets wonky. You move behind the pawn as if it had moved only one square and capture it. But if you want to get into chess because you hate remembering things, you might be disappointed. Recognizing positions is how chess players flex. Yeah, uh, this looks an awful lot like uh, Tal Botvinnik. Accessible or not, new players in chess are going to be extremely behind. Do you know about the Sicilian defense? If not, then you have a lot of catching up to do because people knew about that in 1594. In Korean gamer slang, these old games people have gotten really good in are called koinmul games. And its longtime players are koinmul, which literally translates to standing water. The stale water that never moves on, becoming more and more toxic to anything that dares enter it. Beautiful. The term is used tongue-in-cheek nowadays, but it's there to emphasize how ridiculously good people have gotten. But this doesn't always stop new people from getting into these games. Chess has been played for centuries, Brood War has become a national pastime, and new players have come to slay the gods in MBC2 and Melee. So what is the appeal of these stale water games where everyone is super good, and why do people keep playing them? And it looks like oh, wow. oh my Roundhouse God. with the game one pop Well, some people want to practice or study things in a game to get good. For this to be possible, the things to practice or study must be proven to be good, usually by its masters. These established techniques and strategies include footsies, Korean backdash, the Queen's Gambit, Muta Micro, Infinites, or whatever. Magic creator Richard Garfield refers to these players as honers. Honers don't care that the Sicilian defense was discovered in the 16th century. They just want to study openers to get better at chess. They don't care that the perfect nine dart finish has been calculated and achieved. They just want to practice their aim so they can do it themselves one day. But while those two examples are about honing, one is about muscle memory and the other is about memory memory. In other words, execution and knowledge. Honers like video games because you get to hone both in unique ways. You can nerd out about the properties of champions and weapons, but also flex your actions per minute or aim. In fighting games, a combo requires knowledge of an optimal sequence of buttons and moves, but you need the timing to execute it. Fighting game execution is about precise timing, and this requires practice. But honers don't want to practice or study because repeating something over and over is a good time. They must also gain a meaningful advantage for doing so. This is called leveling up. One of the biggest advantages you can get for honing execution appears in Street Fighter 3. Like most fighting games, Street Fighter 3 has combos that require varying levels of practice to pull off. The idea is, the more practice you put in, the better combos you can do, improving your potential for damage and positioning. If you master the frame-perfect Karafukiage input with Makoto, you get to kill most characters with one combo. Games had always given an immense advantage for immensely practicing combos, but what sets this game apart execution-wise is that there's also a defensive system like this, the infamous universal parry mechanic. As intimidating as it sounds, the input is extremely simple. Just tap forward right before you get hit, or down if it's a low hit works in the air too, where blocking doesn't. Of course, the timing is a bit strict. If you mess up, you just get hit. Thankfully, Third Strike has a bonus stage to help you practice parries, which gradually gets harder. But like most games, you can also just hold back the block, which requires no timing at all. 
The problem is, parrying has so many benefits. You never take damage, you hold your ground, and it increases the chances of a guaranteed punish. So how good can you get at parrying? Theoretically, you could parry every hit and become strike invincible. The more practice you put in, the more you can parry. But what makes this so honable is that there are so many levels. Chun's super art here requires 15 timed inputs to do a full parry. That's 15 places to potentially mess up and 15 levels you need to beat to be successful. With hold back to block, there is only one level. You can start to see why Third Strike has a hip hop soundtrack. You must practice the rhythm of your opponent's attacks to level up your parry. The journey to mastery is long and seemingly endless, but for the honer, a long journey just means more to level up, more advantage to gain, and more milestones to achieve. And the payoff for reaching a goal is reflected by how much practice it took to get there. Level up enough, and you might become a god and do something godlike. Community recognition is a huge motivator for the honer. But in Third Strike, there's an even harder parry called the red parry. A red parry is when you do a parry even while in blocking animation, but the timing window is only two frames or 1 30th of a second, which is five times stricter than a standard parry. And you still get hit if you mess it up. But what's insane about Red Parry is that it wasn't some weird exploit players figured out, but a purposefully designed mechanic in a mainstream gaming franchise. So the question is, can you give players too much of an advantage for practicing execution? Yoshinori Ono thought so. He didn't think the parry system in Street Fighter 3 was bad, but he says when it practically becomes a requirement for entry and you cannot compete on any level unless you master such difficult, precise inputs, then that's where I feel like we restricted ourselves to only an extremely core community. While the commercial failure of Street Fighter 3 can be attributed to many different things, Capcom had no interest in continuing the series any further. This led Ono to consider making the fourth Street Fighter game turn-based, effectively eliminating execution entirely and becoming an actual Street Fighter game with no footsies. Thankfully, that didn't happen, but I get it. We can't have people getting too good by practicing execution. But what about getting too good by studying knowledge? Lei and his 13 stance flowchart isn't going to study itself, and many modern fighters give you a huge advantage for understanding frame data. Even simple fighters give an upper hand to those who study these numbers. And the difference between knowing and not knowing is often a matter of life and death. <laughs> So, can players get too much of an advantage for studying a game? Chess Grandmaster Bobby Fischer thought so. I've come along pretty late in chess. Chess has been played hundreds of years, so there isn't really that much left that's radically new. He criticized chess for requiring too much memorization, describing top chess players as having thick glasses looking at computer screens all day. Beautiful. Fischer went on to make a new variation of chess where the starting position of the back row pieces will be randomized each game. Black's pieces always mirror White's to keep it fair, and this results in 960 possible starting positions, hence the name Chess 960. This fresher version of chess allows chess honer's skills to still be relevant by keeping the same pieces and abilities, but the new starting positions provide something for people who are tired of honing and want to come up with new strategies. In other words, innovate. Innovators are players who want to figure out new strategies in a new game. In the purest sense, they want to keep finding solutions to unique problems. But once practice and study are required, they will find it a chore and either move on to another game or change the rules. Before your scrub alarm goes off, realize you have likely played games with house rules or made some yourself. Does anyone actually play Monopoly by its official rules? But while you and your friends can easily change rules within yourselves, it's much harder in a coded game with a competitive community. This is where balance patches, new characters, and new iterations of the game come in to make more room to innovate. More viable matchups and new mechanics means more strategies to come up with. 
While a pure honer might not want any patches or new characters, it seems to be a much better pill to swallow if the new version doesn't severely devalue their acquired skills. But change the game too much and too often, and it becomes something the honer did not sign up for. As a matter of fact, in speedrunning, one of the honingest activities ever, the game's rules must remain the same if beating a record by a few seconds is to matter. In this sense, there is a lot of crossover between Coinmul FGC and the speedrunning community. The same token, a game meant for pure innovators might need to be difficult to hone or unhonable. You'll notice a lot of innovator games will often change the rules by changing the game. But when someone finds a way to hone it in anyways, the game becomes something the innovator did not sign up for. This game has been out for like, what, a week? Just one week, and people are this try hard at a party game. You're welcome, Giuna. But just because a game starts to require practice doesn't mean there's nothing more to innovate. It just means you have to practice or study to get to the innovating part. Bobby Fischer is often cited for his bold and creative plays, but he was also studying chess 14 hours a day. But being able to hone and innovate is how you become a champion. The problem with Koimur games is that the only people innovating are the ones that have already done a ton of honing. Not everyone gets to show Leffen a thing or two about melee. So Leffen, you can suck my fat... For the better or worse, fighting games have a reputation of being a honer's genre because from the start, it's extremely obvious that there's a lot to practice and a lot to study. I mean, these games have training modes. So the question for devs making modern fighting games is how do we get players to the innovating part faster? One approach is to provide excellent study materials, but this doesn't eliminate the need to study. You can remove or eliminate things that require practice, but honers will have less to hone, and innovator types will get steamrolled anyways because you can't remove honed legacy skills like footsies unless you go turn-based. There is surely a right balance to strike when making these games, but can you satisfy the pure honer and the pure innovator in the same game? 1v1 Brood War is one of the most honed coin wheel games out there. No! There hasn't been a balance patch for decades, but there is use map settings that allow innovator types to create maps that change the rules. Players have created infinite resource maps, zergling only modes, and even this weird metal slug map, which is kind of insane that someone made that. Pull, 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 pull. Some have even gotten good in these variations, forming entire communities and tournaments around them. To try hard, just jump into a new map with new rules. The point is, people can play these games while still existing in the larger StarCraft ecosystem and without affecting the main 1v1 game, which has become a homer's paradise now. Oh, okay, they each have a little dude that they're running around. Oh, this is great! It's become a sort of StarCraft gaming platform. Smash also has very flexible rule shaping, but players went the opposite way and turned an innovator's game into a very honable version. And of course, poker has tons of variations, competitive and even single player. But some developers have directly embraced practice and made games to awaken our inner honer with great success. Of course, Hidetaka Miyazaki had to keep this a secret from the marketing department to get his game made. But some honer games hide its true colors by its very design. What's actually really beautiful about chess is that its honing aspect is hidden to people with no interest studying it. This quiet game that has sat in over 100 million homes has been honed for longer than we've been alive and will be honed after we're not. This was Gerald from Cory Gaming. Thanks for watching. This video was sponsored by Brook Gaming. Brook makes gaming peripherals like the Universal Fighting Board, which lets you use your fight stick on all sorts of different consoles. It's tournament legal and has very low latency, which is why it's a choice of many pros. I've been using mine for years before Brook approached me to do this video, and it's helped me at tournaments where I foolishly signed up for more than five games. They recently made an add-on called the Up 5 that allows you to play on the PS5. It's really nice to be able to just bring one controller to a tournament and play pretty much anything. Apparently, this thing even lets me play on the Mega Drive Mini. See me in Eternal Champions. Thanks to Brook for the sponsor assist, and make sure to check out their products in more detail at brookaccessory.com. See description for links. Thanks to Brook and everyone for the support. See you in the next video.